long way down to our fishing spot. And this is the road we're gonna take. It looks like a lot of it was washed out during this last storm. So it's a lot steeper than it was a couple years ago. That was the last time I've been out. So let's go, hope you don't slip down. Ah, uh, yep. That might happen a few times. Oh man. One thing that I remember about this spot is that there's tons of poison oak. I was hoping that it's still kind of winter so all the leaves would be gone and most of the leaves are gone. But one thing about the branches, they still carry the poison oak oil, that oil, you know? And I just brushed my face all along this. So that's a test. Here's another one right in front of me. My clothes are going to be covered in this oil. But last time I came, I, I didn't get any negative reaction, so I'm hoping I'm kind of immune, hopefully. All right, long way to go. Let's go. Ah, oh, God dang it, man. Uh, got a rod in my back. Poison oak plants everywhere. Dropping my camera. Oh, it's going to be a tough hike. Okay. Oh man, here's the main path. Because the or first part of the main path got eroded. Oh man, how am I gonna do this with my fishing rod behind me? I gotta, gotta take off my fishing rod and just carry it down with my camera. Or else it's gonna be impossible to pass this. I'm not sure what's worse, the poison oak or all these blackberry bushes, all the thorns untying my shoelaces and everything. Scratching my hands up. All for a fish. And maybe not even for sure, you know. You can tell how long it's been since anybody's been here. Some trees falling over from the rain and wind. Just blocking the path. That'll be good. Man, and just when you think it couldn't get worse, you find a very steep part with a tiny rope that I'm trusting that's gonna hold. Knot looks good. That nylon is pretty weather resistant. There used to be ladders here, I swear. Not anymore. Oh man, they took the ladders away. Remember there used to be ladders here, y'all. Oh gosh, I'm slipping. This could be a long fall. I'm wrapping my hand around this rope as I go. Hoping I don't get stuck with it. Oh gosh, how am I ever gonna get up later? Oh man, that's steep. Get a horrible rope burn. Oh gosh. Come on. Oh, man, what's around my waist here? Oh gosh, blackberry thorn on my neck. Looks like ants, hopefully not fire ants. Oh man, camera's stuck. Rod is stuck in the branches. Probably poison oak. Can't move an inch. Rod went down. The camera almost went down too, but look at this thorn bush. Stuck in my pants. Ow. Ow. Okay, almost there. Water looks good. Well, whoever took those ladders away, man, why'd you do that? But whoever put this rope here, thank you for doing that. That helped a lot. Can't even see where I'm stepping and how steep it really is. Oh my gosh, that looks really steep. I can't see though. Kind of made it, almost made it. Oh no, I just don't slip. Woohoo! Ah, all right. Here we are, to the ladder spot, with no more ladders. All right, let's fish, baby. Made it down here a little bit seedy, but getting hot now. And I was not expecting it to be quite as beautiful as it is. The water looks great, a little bit murky, but totally fishable. Because this was such a cool design that I had to pick one up from a local artist in Pacifica his company name is Cotton Crustacean, and we've been talking back and forth for a few months now, and we've created this really amazing 
detail with kelp, Lingcod chasing a kelp greenling, 100% hand drawn t-shirt and we're going to be releasing it soon but we want to do pre-orders and if with the pre-order you can pick any color combination that you want and once the pre-orders are pre-orders are done we're going to change to maybe like just two stock colors but right now if you want to order something in your own custom color go to fishermanslife.net let us know what you want and then we'll ship it out as soon as we can it's probably going to take about a month maybe a month and a half but you get a completely custom shirt exactly how you want and yeah if you want this it's cotton crustacean but check out the website fishermanslife.net for a custom pre-order lingcod chasing the kelp greenling ah man i'm so excited about that and that's what we're trying to catch today a lingcod so we can make the fish sausage that we tried in the previous video except this time the full size one last time was just the proof of concept now that we've proved that it works we're going to get one and make a breakfast link maybe even a hot dog so this is the rig i'm going to be fishing this travel rod today this is the no excuses travel rod. It's something you can keep in your car. No excuses. This is the fisherman's life travel rod too. So just letting you know about that. I'm gonna put it together. And with these, even with the two piece rod, when you put them together, sometimes if you just put them straight on, when you cast, the sections can break apart. So before you line up the guides, give it a twist down. As you twist down, you press it in and that added friction We'll keep the rod in there so they won't come apart when casting and that's something you got to watch out for especially with the travel rods so i'm going to do that with all four sections fits in a check bag really well also comes with this really hard case so whatever you you know it's not going to get damaged when you ship it okay so let's get this rig set up we're going to fish the bobber and herring that i just caught from the san francisco bay a nice little tray size and I see the exact spot where I'm gonna throw it, right where that seagull is sitting. I don't know if you can see that seagull there, but that's my fishing spot. Headed over there now. I got the bobber on and I've got the bobber stoppers on top. A good idea, if you don't have any type of sonar, is to just set the bobber stopper about 15 feet above from where your bait is, especially when you're on the cliffs and you know it's relatively deep. So that's what I'm gonna do. And instead of using that cable baiter that I normally use, I did a sliding snail knot, how I would troll for halibut in the bay. Now, a little bit more of a chance to get hooked, I think. And I was even thinking about doing two trebles, one in the front and one in the back, but I still got that three quarter ounce weight. Another easy way to set the bobber stopper. I know my rod is eight foot, so I'll bring the bobber stopper up the length of the rod and I'll double that again and subtract a foot. That'll be 15 feet. All right, let's see what lies out there. It's an incoming tide, so I want to get over here while I can. All these rocks are a little bit wet, so I know that the waves are splashing up here, so I might have only an hour. That's okay. I think that might be all I need. Okay, so 15 feet deep. Here we go, first cast. We'll let that bobber just move around with the waves. And for some reason, I feel a little bit out of my element today for some reason, like I could fall. I don't know why, I just had that feeling. So I'm staying extra careful. I'm not getting too close to the edges today. I'm tempted to even raise that bobber stopper some more. All right, raise it up to about 20 feet. So from the tip of my rod, I know you can't even see it, but that's how deep we're fishing. And maybe we could, should even go deeper. I'm not sure yet. See what happens. Like, look at these waves. They're bringing it up 10 feet and dropping it down 10 feet. That's better than you can jig on a kayak or a boat. If that doesn't get the attention of anything down there, I don't know what will. But you know the cool thing about the bobber it's really similar to fishing for trout with a bobber. When it goes down, it just bloop. Like it's, it's, there's no questions to fish. It's just floating there and then all of a sudden bloop. Like you know, you absolutely know a fish bit it. And I'm just watching it. 
and that's all it takes. Just keeping your eye on it. It's floating around. I know that three quarter ounce weight has brought the bait all the way down to the bottom. And now it's just a matter of waiting. But the cool thing also about it is that you're fishing so much more area. You're not limited to just throwing out with a weight and letting it sit there. You're drifting it around with the current. It gets shallower and deeper with the waves. It's a really, really great way to fish for the rock from the rocks. I know some of you only want to see this fish sausage being made, but man, this is the whole journey because sometimes you got to really figure it out. And I'm using the bait of all baits. The only thing better than this would be a live bait, and I'm not even convinced that a live one would be better than this. So there's something else going on, and I think I'm just not fishing deep enough. So this is how deep we're going now. There's six feet, 12, 18, 24, 30, and to the bobber stopper, 34 feet, 34 feet deep. Earlier I was fishing 24, which I thought was as deep as I needed, but I never got snagged. I gotta go deeper. So let's fish 34 feet on the bobber. We'll keep going down until we get snagged. 34 feet, let's see what happens. Just doesn't make sense. No fish, not, not even a bite, that's just, too strange. Look, it's crazy. I'm just fishing 20 feet in front of me. It's not getting snagged. Oh, it just went under for a second. Maybe that was a snag. But I'm just fishing right in front of me. Hoping this bobber goes down. Right on the shelf, right on the edge. A lot of times that's where the fish are. Is that a fish or is that snag? Oh, that's bottom, that was a snag. Oh, that's a snag. Uh-oh, oh no. Well, I got 40 pound braid, 30 pound leader, so I'm hoping if I am snagged, the leader will break and I'll keep my bobber at least. Oh man, that's not what I wanted to happen. Gotta be careful I don't lose my balance on the rock either though. Ah oh, man, snagged. All right, let's see what happens. Is the braid gonna break or is the bobber gonna break? Travel rod feels nice though. Come on. Uh, broke something. Let's see if the bobber stays there. All right, kept the bobber at least. So I retied. I'm not gonna fish so close this time, but I did change it up even more. I'm just trying something new every time. I got two treble hooks on. I don't wanna miss any fish if anything bites. One on the back, one on the front. And as far as I know, you're allowed two hooks when you're fishing with rock for rockfish, one rod. So this should be perfectly legal. Every time I cast it, the treble hook goes down like that. I got an idea though. I could put a bobber stopper below it before I give up on this. I'm gonna put a bobber stopper below that. All right, that stayed straight. That'll be perfect. All right, it's working. Here we go. Now I feel confident, we're fishing now, 34 feet deep. Crazy, huh? Look at that. Look at that. Wild. Man, what a day. No bites on the bobber. I just, I think it's time to switch it out. I mean, this bobber's proven, but not today. I'm gonna change it out to a swim bait. One and a half ounce weight, black five inch Kitek. First cast. So crazy how deep it is. Like really, 35, 40, 40 feet deep right there. Fish on. 
Fish on, good one. Fish on, baby. Second cast with the swim bait. What is it? I think it's a black rockfish, maybe. But that came from deep. Feels like a good one. What do we got? Oh, not bad. Not bad. Oh my gosh. I've been waiting for that. A dirty looking big black rockfish. I'm gonna put this on the side. I haven't eaten all day. I might as well keep it. Nice! That's a good size one. That's bigger than that perch I caught last time. I mean, we'll see. Let's get a tide pool, put him in there. Oh, this water looks fresh. That's a good fish right there. That's a good fish. And if we want to release him, he'll stay alive. Yeah, baby. Tied on the bobber rig. And since we found that black rockfish, there's a good chance there's more fish down there. And just because of that, I tied a swim bait on top. I changed the bottom to a cable baiter so I can fish two hooks. And I set this to 40 feet, even in this shallow spot. So we're going big or going home. Well, we got the black rockfish. Let's see how far we can cast this out and let it sit. Okay, that's right where I caught that rockfish. So we're in the zone. Let this sit here for a minute. I've got a good feeling. Got a good feeling. Fish on on the retrieve. A little blue rockfish. On the retrieve. On the swim bait. On the bobber rig. On the retrieve though. Very interesting, huh? Little blue. Good fish. That makes me want to fish a swim bait, man. I'm going to fish a swim bait on the bottom for a little bit. All right, I know a lot of you probably skipping this part, but hey, man, this part is just getting fun for me. So I got 40 foot, 40 feet down. I got that swim bait on top and I got a swim bait on the bottom. It's a weedless hook, but I'm not going weedless. I'm just exposing the hook. So any fish that bites, I can get a good hook set. Three quarter ounce weight. Let's do a slow retrieve. Maybe get another big black rockfish or a lingcod. Who knows, man? Let's find out. Perfect cast. All right. 338. We got 20 minutes. There's the fish. A bite, at least. There's a the fish. Fish on. Or a snag. No, fish on. Is it, what kind of fish is this? Feels good, it's on a swim bait, whatever it is. Man, in the super rough water, don't even need the herring. Hey, this one's pretty good. I might keep this one too. This is the old trusty black and yellow. Or a, uh, oh, it's not, ah, I forgot what it is again. Good looking fish though, huh? Huh, huh? What you think? On a swim bait. Not bad. We'll keep it and do another cast. I mean, dude, I've been fishing all day. I'm gonna keep this one, man. No more catch and release. Family can eat this, I can eat it later. Hell yeah. On an artificial, how cool is that? It's almost four o'clock. Been out here for six hours straight. No food, no water, but I'm feeling great. Fish on, baby. Another one, another one. All in the same spot. Feels like a little black. Well, I should go down there. I wasn't even going to, but I will. That's a nice one. That's a nice blue. Man, these are weird. Oh, that's not even a blue. What? 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 What is this? What is this? This is a good fish, but it looks weird. It's like an olive uh, blue black. It's like a blue black olive. Check it out. What in the world? This is like, like blacks and blues. They usually have no other pigment but this looks like it's got that olive pattern on it. Oh yeah, that's about the size of the first one. Let's go, man, this bobber rig is killing it with the two hooks. Heck yeah. This is all in the matter of, gosh, doesn't that look so strange? That's weird, that's the weirdest fish that I've seen in a long time. 
But this is all in a matter of about five or six minutes. Wow, check it out. These are the fish, but look how they have almost changed colors now. It's like, it's like the sun was shining bright on them. Look at that. The sun was shining bright on them, so they got lighter. Almost to camouflage in the light. Isn't that amazing? Look at this, this is the first one, which is a completely different color from what I originally caught. I mean, so lively. Hold up, hold up. Let me get them out for you just to see. This is the first one. Oh, you punk. Tail whipped us. All right, I'm holding him tight. Let's see. But look at that. Look how his color is so different from what it was originally. Don't you remember how pale it was? Now he's like a healthy looking fish. See, look at that. Like, that's a nice looking fish now. Earlier, it wasn't so nice looking. Look at that fish. What an awesome catch. You know, one of the main reasons I want to get out of here quickly before the sun sets, I'm not really worried about the hike up. I, I want to, I really want to enjoy the ride home. It's such a beautiful ride and I want to be able to see it. All right, where's the big, big black rockfish? Here it is. I feel like a new way to hold them, just keeping their gills closed tight. Just like that. What a nice fish. All right, stab him in the brain one time. So cut his gills. Let's just get some of that blood out. Now as he bleeds, we're going to see, I, I think, there's gonna be more intestine in this fish than there was in that perch, so. So, you know, last time I had that perch, right? And this time I've got this black rockfish, and that's the intestine. It's just about exactly the same size as the last time, and I don't wanna do that same thing. I'm waiting for a lingcod, that's what I was trying to do. So instead, I'm gonna do a very similar recipe, but in a different form. Actually, hey, we got some liver. Let's use the liver right here. Okay, we got a liver. All right, we can use liver. Okay, we got some heart. I'll take the heart. We'll, we'll do this again another day with a big sausage. But for today, we'll do something different. It's good looking fish. No, oh, look, this is its uh, swim bladder. It's air bladder. This is what they use it and what expands when they come up from the bottom of the ocean. And a lot of people eat that. So, hey, we're gonna throw that in too. It's like a little balloon. It's just your standard filet, nothing special. If you've been fishing for more than a couple months, I hope you know how to do this by now. And every time I come out, I've got a new knife with me, testing a bunch of them, seeing which one I like the most. Now we're gonna get it all off. We'll do this whole fish. We'll check for parasites. We hold it up to the sun, and the sun is so bright, I can see right through the skin too. There's nothing in there, no parasites. All right, I'm gonna flip this over to the clean side. Just like last time, I'm gonna do almost something the same. Like this is basically the recipe that I was going to do for the sausage, but man, we just couldn't get a big enough fish today. I mean, got sm three small ones, but nothing big. So let's see how this turns out when it's not the perch. Chop this up very fine. Man, if you guys stuck around with me for this whole fishing video, I'm gonna let you in on that secret I was talking about, at least a little bit, a little preview. I got some land. I got myself a little bit of land. And that's about all I can say right now, but yeah, stay tuned real soon, because it's not just land for me, man. It's kind of land for you guys too. I really want to share this with you guys, like you've, helped me have a career making fishing videos. And I was able to buy this, honestly, mainly because of all your support. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you, so just stay tuned, because that's, that's a preview of the big reveal. It's really not that mushy, though. It looks like sashimi, but maybe, maybe I'll catch a lingcod next time and then use some perch meat for the sausage portion. One thing I have noticed with fish is sometimes when you cook it, the flavor is just on the outside, so you really gotta season it well. But when you do it like this, you got seasoning throughout the whole fish. Oh, hey, forgot to throw in the liver. We're just gonna chop that liver up too, that little fish bladder. And we got the heart here, so let's just include all that, might as well. Ah, that fish bladder is too thick, keep it out. 
So this is truly one of, oh no, oh no, oh no. I was saying this is truly one of my new favorite uh, spices. So, uh, it's a uh, salt, garlic powder, a little onion powder, smoked paprika, chili flakes, and Italian seasoning. And it is, it's delicious. That mix is great. So I'm gonna sprinkle some of that in here. Good amount to hot dog bread. No so soybean oil, just butter in the bread. I know I'm going off on a, a million tangents today and that's probably just because I'm feeling good, but lately I've been, I know, trending fat, this fad thing, but I've been taking these cold showers at home and I measured it's 58 degrees where I, when I take it and supposedly that builds the brown fat and usually I get cold so easy, but taking those showers really ups my mood a lot and I know if I did, I feel like I would be really cold normally. Like right now I'm feeling great. So I definitely feel some added benefits and I'm hoping that it's one of those things like taking care of your health. Remember I was talking about that in the last sausage video? Taking care of your health, so important. And this, besides this little bit of white bread, just protein. <laughs> yeah, it's not that mushy. I think the perch is really good for the sausage factor. Now we're just gonna have a little garlic and then, then we're out of here. Ooh, that could have cut myself bad. That's not a good idea with a little sharp, brand new knife like that. A little garlic. All right, you know what? In this whole thing, just, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but I'm gonna just, I'm gonna put some butter in here. Why? I don't know. Just because I'm the butter man, apparently. So this is the sausage stuffer, and I was going to make the sausage, you already know that, so, but I didn't have any luck with it, so I'm gonna still use this, and this is gonna be perfect to make a little hockey puck. So I'm gonna stuff this down the tube, all that bread, all the seasoning. I'm gonna cover one end of the sausage tube. Cover that as if I was going to stuff it. And I'm just gonna push this down and compress it really, really well. And this is gonna make a beautiful patty. That's what I found last time. That's what I kind of ended the video with. All right, that's what we're kind of left with. One big chunk of meat and we'll cut that off. This kind of is still like a breakfast sausage. You see these things? It's pretty good, let's put them in the pan. All right, let's get a good place for our burner. Turn it on, heat up the pan. We want this pan hot before we add our oil. How lucky am I just to hang out here and enjoy the sunset, man. Look, at that's just gorgeous, gorgeous, so lucky. We're really letting the pan heat up before we add the oil. Like I said in the last video, that's what makes the coating non-stick. So this is ghee, got it at Costco. Just like butter, except it's got a really high cooking temperature. Uh, that's one thing I'm trying to do for health. It's trying to stay away from all those oils like canola oil, peanut oil, all the, all those seed oils, grape seed oil. And I'm really just trying to stick to avocado oil, olive oil. I don't know, man. Okay, a little bit of smoke. Perfect. Now I can throw these guys in. I gotta really tilt it so you can see it because the sun's setting so fast, but it smells so good. I don't have any dipping sauce, but I do have avocado, so avocado will go really well with this. Oh yeah. So one of them got a little bit more brown than the others, but they're all looking good. Nice and crispy. Mm-hmm. Well, looks like the sun's going down too fast to be able to enjoy the ride, but at least I could enjoy the sunset right now. All right. This is a meal well-deserved. Fishing all day for this. No words, y'all. No words, that's so satisfying. Thank you for watching, of course. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.